Yes, sir. Start the same way we did the last time. Uh, Eligible. Learned anything more? I don't know any more than I did last week. You expect to find that out? It's out of my control. I guess we'll find out when they tell us. Is there? Can you say without the whole privacy thing what what the deal is? No. something doesn't happen and uh, he can't play right away, could he play in the second semester? Or is it one of those things where if there's a no at the end of whatever question is being asked, you can't play this entire year? Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be able to play at all. He would, uh, we'd redshirt him. Would, wouldn't be able to or would he play him? He would rather play. I don't, know, well, I don't know what I can tell you, Dave. I don't want to screw him up or mess up. I, I'd just as soon stay out of legal downtown, if that's okay with you. Uh, yeah, you'd have to. Mm -hmm. guys a week into it what have you seen so far from the um, I think our perimeter guys have been have been pretty good our um, our inside guys obviously have a lot to learn um, with with uh, Kevin Noreen being the only one who has any experience but they're they've been They've been really, they've been coachable, they've, they listen, they're trying, you know, they're, we're going to get there. It's just, um, it's hard when you don't have the background to do the things that, that we want to get done, you know, it's just big guys are used to just standing under the basket in high school. I mean, that's pretty much universal. And when you're asking them to do other things, it's, it takes a little bit of time. Is the only guy in the front court with you know experience with, with what you're trying to do and what you want to get accomplished. How does he handle that? And what kind of things are you asking him to do this year? Is it any different than what he's had to do his first couple of seasons? Well, I, I I think the best way to answer it is I I think he has he is a lot more confident offensively. Um, he's he's really spent a lot of time shooting the ball, and I you know I think. He, he, he's changed his mechanics a little bit, and you know, in that he, he didn't get the ball up before. He's getting the ball up a lot better now, and and I think just confidence too. You know, it was always like, should I shoot it or shouldn't I shoot it? And I think he's he's not hesitating now. He's when he's got good looks, he he shoots it. He was always more of a like screener, passer. But you want him to to shoot more than this well, I want him to shoot when he's open. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure that. We're all enthralled about him trying to create shots, but he's going to get shots. He's going to get shots because he does do a good job of screening and and uh, people haven't guarded him. You know, I I think it's fair to say this. Maurice was in on Sunday, I think it was, and told me afterwards that he really enjoyed practice just because of the guys' attitudes. You know, they were. They were very upbeat, and that was the third day in a row. And then we started at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is, I know, it'd be impossible for you to do, Justin. But I mean, um, I, I, I could do 10. <laughs> but um, I mean, he 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 just he loved our guys' attitudes and their enthusiasm. So. So you're not having to coach effort so far. Well, you always do a little bit because we demand a little bit more than what they're used to giving, but. Um, they're willing. I think that's that's the most important thing. Tougher offensively or defensively for the new guys? 
Well, generally, the defense is a little bit ahead of the offense because we, you know, so much is is just learning how to play basketball on offense. But um, I think in the last three or four days, I think the offense has gotten better. I mean, we, we're not very good defensively yet, but we're going to get there, I think. I mean, they, they're, 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 they're trying and they're, I think they're not a bunch of um, real skinny freshmen that are going to get knocked around. They're, you know, they're, they're big kids for being 19 years old. Um, Brown, Garrett, Gary, and, uh, and Juwan, how much do their numbers have to improve from, from last year? Well, Gary admittedly had a bad year. I mean, he uh, and he's playing much, much better. Playing with, with with so much more enthusiasm. He's putting more time in the gym. He's shooting the ball a lot better. I mean, a lot better. Um, Jawan's been really, really good. I mean, he's been good from a from a leadership standpoint. He's been good from standpoint of knowing what you know what we want done. And he's and he's been so much better offensively. You know, he's he's not hesitating when he's open to to jump up and, sh and, and make shots. He's doing a better job, I think, of getting it at the rim and finishing. I think I think both of them have, are dramatically improved. Is this kind of the first instance or, or, or season maybe where Gary's been asked to? I mean, I guess I don't know how much he's been asked in, in his past teams he's played for. How many, you know, to be a shooter, to be a, to be a scorer, is this uh, something different for him at all? Or? He's going. He's going to play. He's going to play a lot of point guard. I mean, he's going to play off the ball too, but he's going to play a lot of point guard. I think his. I think his struggles really were at point guard. Um, you know, he was he was kind of our backup point guard his freshman year and played way better doing that than he did when we took him off the ball last year. I don't know. I mean, I I I just think his for whatever reason his 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 enthusiasm his you know he's got that fire back which which he's got to play with. I mean, he's got to play with great enthusiasm and. And great intensity for him to be a good player. Talked about Juwan and kind of a leadership kind of thing. The middle of last season, the late last season, it was an issue with him not doing what he wanted done. Did the two go hand in hand? Is he doing that as well? Yeah, well, he's. I mean, he's been good. I mean, he's. I think you know from the from the time the the season was over a year ago. I think he and Gary both, and, and I think they admittedly would tell you they didn't have very good years. You know, I think that's the difference between him and some other guys. You know, instead of looking for somebody to blame, they they kind of looked at themselves and said, I you know I've got to do a better job, and they have. Uh, you know, they both they both were. Um, Around came in, you know, asked questions, you know, what do I need to do, you know, how do I help the team win? One of your biggest concerns, how your guys do on the defensive glass, is that what you're concerned about with these guys? Well, it's, well, it's, well, it's hard to win when you give up too many shots. And, and we don't have a we don't have a, a guy who changes shots around the rim. But you know we really haven't had one. But uh, you know I think when you have a guy that changes shots around the rim, it it's it's harder to score on second chance opportunities than it is when you don't have. And, and we've done you know for the most part a pretty good job of not giving up second shots. It's just you know, John. It, it's 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 a whole lot to learn. I mean, it really is. It's you know, we can say you know we try to simplify things or we try to do this, but the reality is, it, it, we do one simple thing that that I, really I could teach all of you to do. Um, 
But the hard part is you do it from one simple thing to the next, to the next, to the next in a very rapid succession, and that's what makes it hard. We don't, I mean, we, we don't stop for, you know, defensive substitutions or offensive substitutions. You know, you're changing from offense to defense, and, you know, you have to know what you're doing in transition at both ends, and, and it happens in a very, in a very rapid succession so it's it, it makes it it becomes a very compound thing as much as you try for it not to and you know I think you get to the point where you you have to break things down I mean it's it's the same thing I think all of us who had any education classes the first thing they teach is whole part whole and and so you try to show them this is what we want to do, and then you try to break that down into the pieces. But the hard part then is putting it back together, back to the whole, and and not lose what you've taught in the parts. And that that's, and, you know, and then it's it's a lot of it's neuromuscular integration. I mean, you know, big guys are used to running to the rim. Instead of running to the ball, they run to the rim. At this level, you have to run to the ball. You can't run at the rim. You guys make make shots, and, and you have to break some bad habits and and try to create different habits. I'm assuming you guys have got probably like four or five practices, and that's not a lot. But um, you know, Remy, Nate, Brandon. Devin, any kind of transition that they're making, any steps that they've taken? I think Nate's been Nate's probably made bigger strides than than the rest of them at this point. Um, he's really, really shot the ball well. He's really shot, and I think when the ball goes in as much as it's gone in for him, you probably don't uh, look at the other things quite as hard as you know, but. Uh, He's got a good understanding. He, he he really understands, I think, how to play, which is a, which is a plus. Uh, he's he's and he's done a great job. I mean, in terms of of getting stronger, he's got a long way to go. But I mean, you look at him; he's going to be a big guy. It's not going to be this year, but he's going to end up being a big, strong, physical guy who can step out and make shots. You know, the other guys are kind of. They're thinking a lot. But you can't play this game and think. It's got to be a reaction, and they're not to the point where they're they're reacting. They're not shooting the ball as well as they're capable of shooting the ball because of their there's so much going on in their head right now. Remy, too. Yeah, Remy, big time. Yeah. And he and he can shoot it, and he will shoot it. No, he just we've got to get him where he doesn't think so much. You know, I think obviously the perimeter guys are way ahead of the inside guys, uh, but th even that being said, our perimeter guys are are not really all that experienced. You know, you uh, we've really got five perimeter guys, and and two of those are sophomores, and the other ones are juniors. So they have to wait for the other guys to catch up to them, or no, because we're you know we we. They understand, I think, the whole a little better, but um, we're we're still trying to, you know, make sure that they understand the parts. And those guys, those guys really need. It's just, you know, Bob. In all honesty, I wonder sometimes. Um, you know, when I came back, everybody said we need to play a better non-conference schedule. The reason our tennis is down in December is we don't play a you know great non-conference schedule. Well, you know, the flip side of that is by not playing a great non-conference schedule, you don't have to be as prepared. You're probably going to win anyway, you know, or have a great chance to win anyway. And I think sometimes when, particularly when you have a bunch of young guys, if you're trying to win early, which we have to do, you know, obviously, 
for for postseason uh, considerations and seating and all those things, you maybe go too fast to try to get everything in and everything done. You know, there there may be there may be some merit to not playing as many hard games early as what as what we're playing. Can uh, Terry and Aaron be leaders on this team, or is that they're trying? Too much? No, they're trying. But you know, you know, Justin, the best the best leaders are guys who lead by example. Right. You know, and. and Deshaun, you know, the, when I first talked to Deshaun about leading, he's like, no, I'm not, Coach, I, you know, I'm not. But he's he kind of transformed into that. But he always led by example. You know, he, he was always uh, he was always the first one in, the last one to leave, and he, you know, he worked hard. And, and so you're looking, the guys are looking at him like, well, if he's doing it, then we ought to all be doing it. I mean, that's what we didn't have. I mean, we just didn't have a year ago the guy that people could look at and say, the year before even with KJ, you know, it's like, look at KJ. He's the best player by a landslide, he's the best player in the, in the conference. Look how hard he works. And look at the time he puts in. And I think we're back to we're back to having that with Terry and Aaron and really, I mean, Wani. Gary's been good. He hadn't, I mean, he didn't really in in five on five situations, I don't think he shot a lot of threes. He shot some, but you know, we we went to Coliseum over the weekend because we had a lot of guys who had never been in there, and and uh, did a lot of shooting drills, and he he shot the ball really well. Last week he said he didn't have inside guys five out. Stuff like that. Could you see eventually, based on what you know from Brandon or Devin at this point, maybe running some stuff through them down low? Probably more Devin and Brandon. I don't know if it's a terrible thing, though, Mike. I mean, in all honesty, who, who did we have? We went to the Final Four. Who did we have? Really nobody. I mean, we threw Dennis in there a little bit, but all he did was throw that grenade. It wasn't really a, he wasn't a power guy, you know. We didn't post Wellington at all. We didn't post Devin, obviously. Post Day a little bit, but that was more when it was a mis mis mismatch. I guess I'm getting at is, is Devin's, or Brandon, no, Devin, sorry. He's probably a little bit less like the guys you mentioned before. He did play a lot of basketball, right? Devin? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did, but he was also also he was also bigger and stronger than everybody played against too. Did you mentioned going over into the Coliseum to get some familiarity with it. Do you think? <clears throat> I know, I know. There's a lot of a lot of benefits of having a practice facility, but do you think that it hurts generally on all teams? They're shooting at home a little bit if they don't shoot more with the depth perception in the, in the gym that they're going to play in. No, I really don't. Lobo won a national championship, and they never practice in the Yum Center. They go in day of the game. Well, they guard. Yeah, they guard, but, I mean, they, they won a national championship. If you look, Marquette never practices in the Bradley Center. Um there's you know there's a lot of a lot of teams that have had great success. Georgetown didn't practice, obviously. Uh, I mean, if that's the case, we should never play a road game. If we're worried about depth perception, then we should schedule them all at home. And it's, it's, I don't. Well, let's be honest. I mean, we 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 were really good at home when we were putting fourteen thousand people in there. I mean, we beat a very very good Ohio State team. We beat a lot of very very good teams in there, but we also we had people in the stands. You know, I think that's more that and just just I think routine. 
I think I think you play better at home a lot of times just because of routine. You know, it's the same routine. It's not it, when you go on the road. It's just a different routine. And then, you know, obviously when you got fourteen, fifteen thousand people cheering for you, it's it's a, it's an emotional deal. But I don't think. I honestly, I don't. I don't. I don't think that there's there's any difference at all. Villanova doesn't really doesn't practice and and there's there's so many teams that ha have historically been the better teams in the country and they don't have a home court per se so I, I don't I, I, I think that's I think what you what you really try to do is do that I know the Bulls used to tell everybody what a terrible shooting place that the new arena was but I think they did it just to get in people's heads Based on what you've seen so far, do you you think you have the personnel to play the way you want to play, or the way people are accustomed to seeing your teams play? Mm. I don't, John. It, it's it's hard right now with so many new guys inside, you know. And you know, people can say you know we had turnover or whatever. The other guys that left were perimeter guys, anyways. I mean, we didn't lose any inside guys, you know. <laughs> per se so Eric Murray but you know I mean we didn't I, I think if if you look at when we're really good it's after guys have been here a little bit where they understand because again it's 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 twice as hard when you have to break bad habits to make good habits you know it, it's um, and we and you know you run to the basket when you're a big and you run to the basket, your guy's going to get a heck of a good shot. But in high school, that's the, that's the right thing to do. But it's not the right thing to do here. And that's just that's one example, I think, of, of guys that have just had those habits their whole lives. And now all of a sudden we're trying to break that habit. It's not as hard for perimeter guys as it is for bigs. Mm-hmm.